Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Don't worry. If the brain is damaged, another one will activate in seconds. The power will start again. A backup brain was hidden years ago, just in case. This oh. is episode 231, recorded <laughs> April 20th, 2023. Gruesome <clears throat> Magazine. I didn't see any cold storage or cryogenic units or anything for that brain. That uh, was I don't think that matters. It's just uh, like a room temperature mm-hmm. brain that just plops down <laughs> glass. Yeah. Just put a moist towel on it every night. It'll be yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. It was nasty. All right. Mm-hmm. My name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic mm-hmm. film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. <clears throat> also, uh, on this podcast, we are partnering with Play Now Media and their streaming apps. And Decades of Horror, you can now find on a bajillion other apps. So 80s, I believe, mm-hmm. is on Wicked Horror TV and uh, the Free Horror Movie Channel right now and uh if you have roku you can get the retro or 70s 80s and 90s hopefully that'll be up uh on other sites later this year but it's cool stuff um i didn't see this movie on any of them which is probably to their credit so uh standards that's debatable that's on this podcast well they do rotate (laughs) through a lot of different movies so you know, check them out. Uh, on this mm-hmm. podcast, we'll start by giving some basic details of the film uh, that we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions, uh, some taglines, and uh, some visual aids and general discussion about whatever trips our trigger. Some of it relating to the film. Yes. Joining mm-hmm. me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, a co host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How are you doing, Crystal? I'm great. I'm, see, I'm wearing my leopard in honor of the movie. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I was like, I was getting, Excellent. getting into the spirit. I was going to wear my Frankenstein t-shirt, but it was in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> but you have Frankenstein. Is he on? Yeah, I see uh, him on oh, your shirt. Oh, on this shirt. shirt. Yeah, there is mm-hmm. on this shirt. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, and by the way, Gruesome Magazine podcast, folks, we've been reviewing uh, season five of The Slasher. Yeah. which is called Ripper that's Excellent. on Shutter, and it's we're digging it we're digging mm-hmm. it i love it so good i think is that the second fourth. season of that uh, season five five okay i watched wow. the first season and it was good oh, yeah this is, is the best season actually yeah. this season is the best one it's it's like it's like set in like victorian times oh okay. so yeah so ripper is like a jack ripper jack the ripper yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Only in really Toronto. gory yeah it's kind of weird but whatever hey. buy it. it's an alternative history anyway right so right doesn't right. matter mm-hmm. also joining us is is uh joining us Joining me and us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, <laughs> the classic era, and the 1970s. Chad. We're going Chad. gangbusters tonight. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I've been this practicing movie broke us. My, uh, it's good to be here with Miss. Miss whoever. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, co-host of Decades of Horror, the 1970s, and... A published author. All around nice guy. Oh, yeah, a yeah. published author and all around nice guy. It looks all awesome, by nice the way. Guy. Thank you. Awesome. And just to make sure y'all could see this, this is cool art, I think. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, sweet. That's Yay. nice. Yes. Well, Susan, can, where can we work in this? M. Be Roddy purchased? did that cover. This can be purchased Amazon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just look up Bill Mulligan. It's the only book that's going to come up for me. Well, and, uh, yeah, so yeah. Far. And it's on. Uh, if you have uh, Kindle Unlimited, it is you can get it with that. Yeah, I think oh, that's cool. supposed to go live to. Well, <clears throat> by the time this comes out, yes, yes, it will be. And uh, yes, I'm very happy. Tomorrow, I'm heading off to tomorrow for us now. I'm heading off to RavenCon where we will have the official book launch party. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, that's. I'm I'm getting a copy right now. Demon. Oh, look at you! 
Are you gonna sign it for me? Of course, of course, I'm gonna sign it for you. Gosh, I have to think about what to say. You're but thanks. It's been, the, the, the response has been really, really cool. Everyone's been great, and you know, I got, I got to thank everyone in my life because all of you are a part in there. In other words, I based many characters on Chad. So, um, and most of them <laughs> die, die horrible. <laughs> You will believe oh, the yeah. horrible ways they die. So good. <laughs> one of them, it. one of them is strapped to a chair and he's forced to watch Frankenstein Island. It, I, it, it was, it was almost too gruesome. The the editor said, "Maybe you got to take this out." I'm like, no, come on, we got to go hardcore horror on this. Based on a true story. Yeah. I just wonder if you guys know what real entertainment is. That's all I'm saying. I'm what not sure you is? do. What real no. entertainment is? I'm not no. sure. I'm pretty we'll, sure, I'm, we'll I'm pretty out, sure yeah. I got an idea of what good entertainment is. <laughs> one I love you, can, Crystal, despite everything. One thing you can say about us is uh, <laughs> we got to give the people what they want. So yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Today, yeah. Today's episode requested by a couple people. I know uh, Mikey Z requested it, and I, mm-hmm. you know, I hate to say this, but I, I forget what the other guy's name was. Was it Milner? No, it was Andy? Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Tyler. Okay. I think Tyler Moore. I. I oh, could totally be wrong like, about yeah, last name. More? Check but I feel feedback. like that's no, my, uh, my I want to get it right because I don't want to be blaming any innocent Tyler Moores out there. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I had a, I had a dream last night. Oh. Oh, no. And I was dreaming. Yeah. Was of, I in of, it again? No, this time it was <laughs> Santos Ellen Jr. And he came to me in this dream and he said, Chad, I'm begging you to bring back Banning. So <laughs> ban- Banning is back. I, okay. we're, What's we're Banning? Back. We're like just going to start. Banning you mean banning balls. movies? Santos, no. No. Banning, no. banning listeners. Banning whatever people somebody would make for wanting to do these stupid movies. Yes. Yeah. Santos was famous for banning people. That's so, okay. Somebody that's funny. A, yeah. Whenever somebody would make a comment, or they also did a stump the saint thing where you'd send mm-hmm. in trivia questions. If you stumped them, then then you were banned. And and if you did that frequently, you were banned for life. <laughs> Bad for life. But then next week they'd have another comment. Wait, wait, he's bad. No, no. We're, we're, so anyway. He got paroled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So our movie. Yes. There I'm it is. trying to put it on. Bum, bum, bum. 1981. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of hard man. to recognize, but I had to throw this picture up here of Steve Brody in mid guffaw. I don't know what, laugh. What, yeah. what he did the whole time. Directed uh, and written by Jerry Warren, although Ooh. the credit for Jerry Warren for the writing is Jacques Le Couture. Or Le Couture? Oh, boy. Uh, I like Le Couture. Le Couture. Yeah. Le Couture. I go with that. Cast, the <laughs> cast Le Couture. Uh, it's a pretty good cast, actually. Uh, Robert Clark, Steve Brody, Cameron Mitchell, Andrew Duggan, John Carradine, Catherine Victor, Robert Christopher, Kane Bodkin, and Patrick O'Neill. Production company is Cerrito Films or and Chris War. Uh, hmm. uh, it was released November 27, 1981 in Kokomo, Indiana. The synopsis. Hmm. <laughs> when a hot air balloon crashes on a remote island, the crew discovers Dr. Frankenstein's ancestor carrying on the family work along with a race of mutants and a population of Amazons. On the moon. Okay, yeah. there. That yeah, it makes that it sound was... great. Mm-hmm. And it might be. Were they Amazons? They were They were like... Well, uh, I mean, yeah. no, they were alien technically women. part alien. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. But, you know, with with lack of a better word, I suppose that works. They single-handedly right. wiped out the leopard population on that island. Oh, right. Yes, they sure did. But <laughs> you, you had, uh, apparently there was a lot of fauna that we never saw because Dear every God. daylight scene was accompanied with birds chirping and every night mm. scene was accompanied with crickets uh, chirping, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, this is Crystal's pick. So let's okay. go to first impressions and Crystal. Yeah. I yes, know you Crystal, had tell us though. all about it. <laughs> you just okay, got tired so, of people asking for it, right? So <laughs> people have been asking for this movie and I had never seen it. So of course, 
you know, I it I it's on Tubi. Why haven't we done it? Let's just do it. And I guess the first thing that comes to mind when I think about this movie is what hath God wrought? <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned a valuable um, <laughs> lesson. Just because it's on Tubi doesn't mean we should cover it. <laughs> but I will say this. Okay, so if you like 80s horror movies, I like and love hate 80s horror movies too. If you like 60s horror movies, then I think that you'll like this movie. This movie is not like an 80s horror movie. It's like a 60s horror movie in color it's odd and it's shot poorly and the sound is like it's odd <laughs> it's it's it was so very entertaining when i first started watching it i was like oh my god i didn't know mikey hated us why <laughs> why would he do this to us but then i just like i saw that dog and i was like that is that's a cute dog i can get behind that dog and then as i was just watching i found myself cracking up every five seconds about something about the movie and i got into it and i got into the story and it's horrible but funny and the acting is really bad. <laughs> really bad but uh, so bad it's good see it was so bad it was good to me i enjoyed it and i swear jeff at one point in this movie i swear i saw adam driver mm -hmm. see oh, really? let's see yeah i told you you were hitting the time look doesn't that mm. look like adam driver I, I had to stop it you know you know have you seen him which in the one seven? the one with his face cut off the nose right there. the nose is this <laughs> That is totally Adam Driver from like, you know, when he did the 70s, like, you don't know what, I'm... cheese and rice, guys. Are y'all Adam see. Driver fans? I am. Well, Adam... Yeah. You're, you're talking about uh, Star Wars, Adam Driver, right? Yes, but yeah. not as Star Wars. Right, it's... right, right. Yeah, but yeah, it looks just like him. Okay, so see, guys, if y'all are watching, you have to be watching, and you see that then you have to chime in as to whether you agree. Okay, look, actually, the I nose, see him. The nose he's right the... there. And he's right here in a black tank top in this. Like, it totally looks like him to me. Like, and oh, I know I've I seen see. him with that beanie. Yeah. Mm. It, I know Adam Driver. Oh, yeah, he was on that, he had that beanie on <laughs> Show that up again, Crystal. Oh, oh, God. I just shut it. But maybe okay. I'll. Never mind. Try to, hey, Crystal, yeah, do you ever like sorry. see Adam Driver in potato chips or your toast or something? <laughs> toast, yeah. No, no. But this specifically, it's I know I've seen him look it, in that outfit and everything. And I was like, oh, that's funny. This I, just continues okay. to blow think, my mind. The further yeah. we go along, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> all right. Uh, so apparently from watching this movie, I've lost my mind. But you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a thing. But yeah, I... It's not a good movie, but it's super entertaining. It's It was very entertaining. It just felt very 60s. I mean, that's how that's what it felt like. It, and actually, at points with the music and the way it was done in the beginning, it reminded me of, like, these old, like, Disney, Disney movies, like, where they would go, like, like, where they were, like, Oh God, where they were trying to teach something or whatever, oh, oh, and I was oh. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know." What do you know mean. what I'm talking about? Like, I wish I could. I don't know what they were. I was like way too young, but I was like, I just remember seeing them, and and it's kind of the same kind of feeling where the sound yeah. is like, you know, this music and very odd. And but the story is actually pretty good, and I loved the way it ended. Oh my God, I was like, <laughs> I was. It was hilarious. Okay, Look, it was stupid up. and hilarious. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen it, y if you like 80s and it's 80s and that's what your thing is, then you're going to not like this movie. I cannot believe this movie was made in the 80s, honestly. Yeah. It oh. shocks me. It blows my mind that it was made in the 80s because it feels so old. But if you like those older, you know, sci-fi-ish horror type movies, you might. I think you might like this. It's fun. Mm -hmm. All righty. Thank you, Crystal. Mm -hmm. and now let's hear 
Oh Chad. God, here we go. Chad, Chad feels like he's being punked. <laughs> you know, we you know we should have done. We should have had the all of us get together to him, and, and pretend that we love this movie and and left Chad out of the loop, and he'd be just like, "Wait, did I watch the wrong movie again?" <laughs> I'd still say what was on my mind anyway. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I agree with Crystal. Oh, this is a terrible movie. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I was going to say, I was that, like, wait, that's, what? That's, that's the extent of my agreeing with Crystal, though. This is... The, I like I like bad movies. I like God Monster, okay? I liked God Monster. And that's a horrible movie. I, I found myself angry. Angry. Mystified. Uh, <laughs> I could... I couldn't believe it was going on for five hours and it was only an hour and a half. I couldn't. Uh, this is the this is the stupidest, dumbest movie I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Uh, in my entire existence, I I hate this movie. Hmm. I hate it. I hate the storyline. I hate uh, the actors in it. Uh, I hate all the little scenes of them tiptoeing through the woods for no reason. I, uh, Frankenstein's monster finally shows up at the, the last 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> uh, and does even nothing. Then, and even then I was yeah. sure it was him. All he did was yeah, yeah, like he was swatting at gnats or something the whole time. <laughs> um, this ooh, ooh. And John Carradine, the poor, poor guy. Yeah. The yeah. poor, poor guy. Just he must have really needed a paycheck bad to for the about two hours worth of, of shooting they if, if that or if that for him and it was a great gig. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I just this I got we'll, I go, how we'll much get in, paid. we'll get into it as we go. Yeah more but I, I whoo i can't give this one a pass i just can't i i can't my my ancestors will come alive and kill me <laughs> I, I, I this oh they my might, god they might yeah. all right well let's hear from bill mulligan there you go. okay go. i i have a personal relationship with filmmaker filmmaker jerry warren in scare quotes because he actually does hold an interesting role in my young life. But when I grew up, we had we got three channels, sometimes four, but mostly three. They showed a lot of movies. They showed a lot of horror movies on the weekends. And every every week I'd get TV Guide and I'd go through with a highlighter and, and you know, see you hoping for movies I hadn't seen before. And it was a Jerry Warren movie that actually gave me an epiphany. I don't know what age it was. But um, it was the incredible petrified world. If anyone's seen this, they know where this is going. This was the movie that made me realize that it was possible for a movie <laughs> mm -hmm. for a movie to be a horror movie, and I never wanted to watch it again because I would watch <laughs> everything. It didn't. I was always hoping for something new. Oh, I've never seen this one before. But even if it was the same stuff I'd watched a hundred times, I'd watch it again. I loved horror, science fiction, fantasy movies that much. But The Incredible Petrified World is about a bunch of people go down the ocean in a diving bell and they find a cave and then they walk around it for 80 minutes. That's a Jerry Warren movie right there. Lots of dialogue that says nothing, no plot, nothing good about him. And and he was uh, he was also probably the first filmmaker where I realized, you know, just like I discovered, oh, Mario Bava, his stuff is always good. Oh, Ray Harryhausen, his stuff is always good. Roger Corman, always interesting. Uh, a Jerry Warren movie is a terrible movie. They're terrible in different ways, but if he gets his mitts on it, he could take good movies and turn them into bad movies. He was big on getting foreign films and chopping them up until they're incomprehensible, throwing out dialogue because he thought it was boring, then realized he threw out too much, so he filmed new dialogue that was infinitely worse than the stuff he threw out, usually with John Kerry. He had a stock group of people he would show over and over again, and he just ruined everything he touched. Um, and this is probably his best movie because it's, it's kind of, it's original from beginning to end. It has a 
<clears throat> I, I agree with Crystal. It, to me, it doesn't even feel like a 60s movie. It feels like a 50s movie. Like Maybe, Mesa, yeah. Maybe Mesa of Lost that. Women. It's got that mm -hmm. It's got that pulp men's magazine thing. A bunch of guys land on an island, and there's pirates, zombies, aliens, Amazons, Frankenstein monster. All these, all these elements are thrown in there. And that sounds really entertaining if it were made by someone who is not Jerry Warren. <laughs> because here's the thing about him. And look, the man the man is deceased, and he may have been a wonderful father and husband and everything else. But I've read some interviews with him, and the, the sense that I get is that people like Ed Wood and Al Adamson and Larry Buchanan, they made bad movies, but they didn't mean to. They just weren't talented. You know, mm -hmm. they tried, though. They tried, you know, poor Ed Wood. I'm going to make a movie about an alien invasion. I've got nothing. I don't have a pot to piss in. Um, I'm going to use what little pot I have to make tin plates and pretend, you know, he, his reach so exceeded his grasp, but he loved movies and he wanted to make better movies than he did. And in his mind, these were great because he was delusional. But, um, this guy, Jerry Warren, he was out to make a buck and that was it. And he was not about to put in any more effort than it took to make a buck. If you told him, listen, if we work just a little bit harder, we can make a buck and a quarter. And he'd be like, I'm okay with a buck. You know, mm -hmm. I just need something that they will <clears throat> throw back in my face and, and I'll, I'll make a small profit. And that was it. It's the most cynical, you know, just, yeah, I just don't like his stuff. <laughs> um, but this now, look, was I entertained? Yes, because I watched it on Riff Tracks. I've already suffered through this movie cold. I wasn't about to do that again. So I watched the Riff Tracks version and it's it's way more entertaining than it would be otherwise. But even those guys. There's some movies that give so little. There's so much just walking from place to place. There's only so many ways you can talk about that. But if I were going to recommend this to anyone, that's the way I'd, I'd recommend to watch it. And it is an oddity. It doesn't feel like it should be anywhere near an 80s film. It's like they found a 50s film mm -hmm. and released it in the 80s. But no, by God, he made this movie. And it had been 15 years since he last made a movie and apparently had not watched a lot of movies. So he was still making movies the way he always did. Yeah. Or like, neckerchiefs in the 80s. Nobody. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dino, Dino did. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but look, you know, all kidding aside, I, I, I'm going to joke. I'm going to make Mikey Z regret this for his whole life. But no, I am. I was kind of looking forward to watching this because I knew what we were getting into. And there is nothing else like this out there. This is such a strange thing and then you look at the date and you're like that's got to be a typo you know yeah. but this movie did get out it's got lots of posters it has it actually was released in theaters people paid money and watched this movie wow yeah i'm amazed okay <laughs> well we'll get into more detail uh later this is i guess maybe not so obviously <clears throat> but this is the first time that i've seen it and this is the kind of movie that I would never, <laughs> ever, ever watch on my own. So these are the kind of movies we need somebody else to pick yes. or somebody else to suggest. And <laughs> you know me. So I actually watched this twice. Oh, dear or, God. Or, or maybe two and a third times because I watched did it once. Did you get the DVD? No, I did not. I, I watched it once and then I thought, well, I'll try the Rift Tracks one. Maybe that'll be good and oh I, I wish i had seen that yeah you're, I, I don't know i don't like those very much that's just me nothing wrong with them it just they're they're distracting to me <laughs> so i went back and rewatched the original kid on tubi and the second time around i was just the first time i think i sat there uh, with yeah. my mouth hanging open the whole mm -hmm. time and the second time i was <laughs> laughing my ass off because the dialogue right. makes no sense. The scene <laughs> sequences make no sense. They'll just, uh, and they're, yes. it's like, I don't know. Awesome. I, I think this takes place over like 10 days because every other scene is day and night, day and yeah. night, day and night with no explanation of what the hell's going on. Just all of a sudden, here they are walking someplace else again, you know? Uh, and then some of the, some of the sentences made no sense. They weren't even proper English or, I, he's he has that one line about I'll, 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 I'll have to look it up but it, 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 it's something to do with time that just god so anyway <laughs> i laughed at it quite a bit uh the second time around um and and i was actually trying to jot down 
the storyline and see if it made any sense. And there's just, there's nothing, there's, there's no hope for the storyline. They throw everything in the kitchen sink in there. Uh, and it, it just doesn't pan out, but I, am I going to say I enjoyed it? Will I watch it again? I will probably never watch this again, but I, I, I did, I didn't enjoy the movie. I, I enjoyed myself having fun with it, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That, that's, uh, cause this guy, Jerry Warren, he did everything. He's the, he's the writer, director, producer, yep. the music, the editing, the production design. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know who to blame. No yeah. one to blame but himself. So anyway, let's let's move on from there. <sighs> and we'll take a look at some posters. Thank you, that... everybody, for tuning in tonight. And it's been yeah. a great podcast. <laughs> Bill, yeah. you know what yeah. surprises me about this? I expected to find a whole bunch of also known as alternate titles on this. And there aren't any. Every, no, I mean, everything I looked up was just... Frankenstein I mean, Frankenstein Island, Island, Island does it. sum it up. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's, it's... I thought so, of a lot of different titles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Before Frankenstein's toilet, posters. Frankenstein's outhouse. Oh, Frankenstein. yeah, you know what we need. Before we do the posters, we have to do the taglines. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what was that? <laughs> welcome, uh, everybody, uh, to... Uh, Taglines with Chad. I think we should have one of Crystal and do taglines with Crystal one one week. We, so that because when you when you feel like you're not ready to do it like this, like yeah, like when you just yeah. when the heart when your heart's not in it when you're yeah, just not <laughs> especially if it's a movie that you like and everybody else hates. Uh, uh, okay, the heart is lacking. I get it. That, okay, first tagline for this piece of steaming garbage is: Are you kidding, Jeff? This person. <laughs> wait, what is it? What is it? Oh, oh I gotta God. hear it. I oh, know. I can't you... wait. SOS. 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 I That's saw... it. No. I saw that on a poster. <laughs> it got there was yes. seven SOSs and they got smaller That's as they so went funny. down into, towards the middle of the poster, but. Anyway. Oh, yes. oh God! Mm-hmm. All right, next tagline: "Caught in a web of a madman's dream." Wow. Okay. That's my Sammy Castle. I, I didn't see any webs, yeah. but yeah. I saw a lot of madmen. Yeah, it was a madman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Upon the seamen find adventures untold. <laughs> oh. Tagline: Yeah. Step. Yikes. I forgot punctuation. Oh, there was there is no punctuation there. Mm-hmm. I, I know they forgot it upon the scene. Okay. It's a one way ticket to terror. <laughs> okay. But that's not true. They mm-hmm. left. They did leave. That's why mm-hmm. this tagline yeah, they is got back. stupid. Yeah. Uh seven million volts of power. Okay, we don't understand that, like we huh? said. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Mind jolt! Seven million volts of cosmic fire. Oh, cosmic fire. There were seven million volts. Yeah, that I got. Yeah, I did see some cosmic wow. fire. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bill's got okay. some pictures of cosmic fire. Yeah. <laughs> Next one. Here's a man transformed by a weird experience. Oh, well, okay. Okay. His name's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Or Dino. Kevin. I don't know. It could yeah. be Dino. Humans controlled by an alien brain at room okay. temperature. Yeah. Mm. Jesus. All That's right. pretty bad. Beware the power of dot, dot, dot. A power. A dramatic effect. Yes. A power. <laughs> a power. <laughs> and the next one, beware when you visit dot, dot, dot. You see how I added the dot, dot, dot yeah. in there, just like in poetry, <laughs> do, drama. Do, do. Yeah. Ellipsy. Okay. That's mm-hmm. it, too. Beware when you visit and beware the power of. You, yeah. You know. Dot, dot, dot. All right. They're alive. Jungle Mysterians show you half their secrets. The total is learned when you visit dot, dot, dot. Jesus. See, that—that that is, that is a Jerry Warren line. It's 
the words are all English, <laughs> and it does make some kind of sense, but no one would ever say, that's half the secret. The total is when you... It's like, it's like if it was run through early artificial intelligence chatbot or something. It, it just, it's really ah. awkward. I don't even know if they did that. So uh, that mm. was on an ad. That was a, a newspaper ad. So um, that's been... Taglines with, with Chad. Chad. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Took one for the team there. He Thank does. You. He continues to take him for the team. Now, back to the posters. Here we go. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking it from the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look and at there that. it is. Humans controlled yep. by an alien brain. That's a, that's a tagline. Never got to see the alien. Yeah. Here, man, is transformed. No. It does. It does show you one of the best elements of the film: the cheap plastic skulls that litter the yeah. island yeah. Mm -hmm. with knives through their eyeballs. It's like they raided the day after Halloween. They went to all the dollar stores and just got everything they could for fifty cents. I like the one that exploded, but it was still intact after the little explosion. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, a little pop of smoke, a little, a little skull power, uh, and then. That one on top God, is actually that pretty. That bottom cool. one is ridiculous. Yeah. What is he doing? <laughs> Looks like he's doing the tattoo. And that's all he did during the fight uh, sequence. Funny. He just sort of stood there and just. Rah, rah, rah. Maybe well, if he seemed like he was carton. He was like left-handed or something too, because he would always his left hand was the one that was going. Rah, 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 yeah, it was a really right bad just... Karloff impression. <laughs> yeah. And everyone ignored him because why wouldn't they? I yeah. like that top one. It's it's like yeah, me too. Yeah. Kind of Cool cartoon. Looks like a comic oh, book cool. cover. Yeah. 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 Like the truth is they didn't have to have Frankenstein in this, and it still would be no. Frankenstein Island. Well, they almost based did. On it's, the story. Like, it's like the last 15 minutes, and someone woke up and said, Shouldn't there be a Frankenstein yeah. on Frankenstein Island? Well, we got Sheila Frankenstein, yeah. but I, I don't think that's gonna uh, put the monsters in come seats. on right after it. We're not yeah. gonna worry about it. Um all right, and I think we have one more poster. Mm. Oh, look at that top one. Good Lord. Yeah. Poor John uh, Carradine. Who is that you know, some girl in blue? Nah, she's not in the movie. Oh, Frank. boy. Wow. What? <laughs> Why is it? Oh, <laughs> boy. And her arm? Look how wonky her arm is. <laughs> what is yeah. Uh Okay. Oh, when we boy. Get, when we get to the Jerry Warren uh, Wall of mm. Shame, there's a couple of the um, so bad. There's a couple of posters he made. That, the, the sense of anatomy is so, so off, so terrible. I mean, I mean, look at that jawbone hanging down from the yeah, creature pick, there. But it all, but it, but its uh. mouth is closed, right? I don't understand. I'm very confused. It it's looks bad. like a jawbone is hanging like Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. But but do you see the whole the mouth is closed? It's yeah, like, I thought that was a tooth at the top. Mm -hmm. there. And she's not yeah. even wearing a leopard print bikini. So, you know, there's nope. no continuity mm -hmm. between this poster and this nope. film at all. Neither is was... John Carradine. If you wanted to sell it, put John Carradine in one of those bikinis. And let, yeah. put him there was no poster. nurses there. Hasn't he so, suffered okay. enough? So, Bill, you, you brought up. Uh, okay. Warren. Look, so, look at this. See, look how dated all of these look. Well, most this of them exactly are. It, see? Yeah, most of them are from the fifties and and mm -hmm. you know early sixties or so. But he, he made the Wild World of Batwoman, got sued, and then pretty much left for a while, and then felt compelled to come back and inflict Frankenstein Island on us. But the one thing all these movies have in common is that they are dreadful. Some of them are um, films that were like uh, the Attack of the Mayan Mummy or whatever. Um, those were legit films that he came and ruined. Curse of the Stone Hand is like two movies that are separated by decades that he slapped together and tried to make one movie out of. It is the most incomprehensible thing you can imagine. Uh, I've I've actually seen Face of the Screaming Werewolf, and that's also yeah, like um, doesn't go anywhere. So yeah, we did uh, um, Attack of the Mayan, or no, we did. Uh, it's the Aztec mummy, I think. It's just what the first one is. Well, that yeah, that and was, then, I think, and the then it's followed by the Curse of the Aztec Mummy, and then that's followed by uh, the Robot versus the Aztec Mummy. Oh, right, right, mummy. And then he steals the international rights, so it couldn't be released in the U.S. and just butchers butchered. It. 
and puts all this American dialogue in there, totally changes the meaning of the room, has these people sitting around talking about it. It mm -hmm. pulls in pieces from, I think, at least two of those original trilogy, maybe three. We talked we talked about that in detail when we did the Aztec Mummy on, on uh, classic era. And, and it's just... Weird. It's, especially if you've seen the originals, it's almost unwatchable. It, it feels like uh, a really crappy version of what the Americans did to Godzilla when they stuck <laughs> Raymond Burr into to I'm tell the story. He couldn't get Raymond Burr to be in, yeah, the, in that. Yeah. He got anyway. John Carradine to be in this. A couple of, and that's a, and that's another thing too. He had some good character actors yeah. that have done way better stuff than. Uh, yeah than this and I, Cameron why, Mitchell why would you work with this guy more than once and the only thing I can think is that whatever else we can say about him his checks did not bounce yeah maybe and he was probably easy to work with I mean you, had, you know you had a few days was, yeah probably easy to work with and Who's paid decently <laughs> like why not nobody's Shit. gonna have yeah, I mean, like, 40 years for Bell. yeah a little Do bit think, Cameron Mitchell know we'd be talking about it and right in it oh yeah they thought he'd never see but can you imagine uh, Jerry Warren ever saying, that take just wasn't good enough. Let's do yeah, it again. Yeah, exactly. No, Never. No. So, you know, it is yep. easy work. Yeah. And I uh, will say, people like Cameron Mitchell and, and John Carradine, they knew they were in crap because they've been in great movies and they knew what a great movie was and what a crap movie was. But they are, they're giving it their all. They are, they're overacting, but at least that's acting. Uh you know, it's one of those the doctor because he was good. No, that that was Robert Clark, who actually was okay. he was the hideous sun demon. Yeah, he was okay. Uh, Cameron Mitchell was the guy in the in the, the jail, jail cell. cell who kept quoting Poe. Oh, Lenore and his yeah. wife Lenore. <laughs> so I really had the feeling he was probably making up on the spot. No, it was yeah. real. That was the, he had he had the lines right. That was from uh, Lenore. Oh no 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 no. I mean I think I think yeah. he probably. You know, oh. probably said to Jerry Warren, hey, can I quote oh. some Poe? And Warren's like, what the hell ever? I was like, oh, no, the lines were good. I was actually like, <laughs> well, at I first see, uh, I was thinking he was trying to quote Nevermore, but it was Lenore. St uh, Steve Brody's name is on the, the wild world of Batwoman. Yeah, well, uh, and Catherine Victor, we got a few pictures of her. <laughs> her who thrills actually rather ripped like. forth. <laughs> you know, the, there were, he had mean? his stock. Yeah, her thrills, her thrills ripped, ripped forth. It's oh, just, God. You swear English had to be like his fifth or seventh language, but no, he was born and bred here. He, he, he well, I actually read speak. something where they said they didn't, you know, when he bought it, when he bought the Aztec Mummy movies, he he said it would cost too much to translate all of it, so he just dumped, you know, cut in these American scenes as well. Who is the Batwoman carrying right there? I don't um, know. I don't know. Is that good? question that must be one of, the, one of the thrills that's ripping forth that's, uh... oh god i don't get that whole poster i just you don't. get you i think i've got another one with the the picture the poster of um teenage zombies which um is another Her one of his. well there's a it's there's cool. another movie it's called ridiculous. just called batwoman a mexican movie that's uh yeah, yeah. but that's she was way like better. a way yeah. oh, way better yeah yeah, yeah. Door. Richard door. um so he All got right. sued, and then they changed it to. Uh, I, I've heard different things that he got sued and he lost, and he sued. They got sued and they won, but by the time the, the lawsuit was over, people were pretty much tired of Batman, so he changed it to. She was a hippie vampire. What? Yeah. That doesn't even. What makes sense? This is Jerry. <laughs> he didn't lose any slumber That's on that. So weird. He takes. Jeez. He takes common sense. Throws it on the ground, stand on its chest, and screams in its face. Cat that bite. was interesting. <laughs> well, then this is this kind of explains a lot of things. Teenage, teenage zombies starring oh, gorilla. Oh, I want you to look at that poster. Look at look at the anatomy. How does that human woman work? Her legs both. She's got the the torso of a woman and the legs of a woman, but not the same way. Right. Right. What are the, yeah. the hands? The hands. Uh, there is no sense to the anatomy. But here is the quote that I think sums up Jerry Warren. And he was unashamed when he, he said this to, I believe it was Tom Weaver um, interviewing him. 
I was in the business to make money. I never, ever tried in any way to compete or make something worthwhile. I only did enough to get by so they would buy it, so it would play, and I'd get a few dollars. Okay. Well, well I mean, the, hey. That's the that's Jerry fair. Warren stamp of quality right there. That sounds pretty similar to uh, something I read. I think it was Herschel Gordon Lewis said something similar to that. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, well, he was, isn't he the one that did all the marketing seminars and wrote the books on marketing and stuff? Yeah, so. He's a marketing genius. He basically said he found a way to make money. He could make these cheap genre movies and make money. It yeah. wasn't, wasn't. And it's wasn't also trying to make true. good movies. He was trying to make the, money. The last Herschel Gordon Lewis movie has the exact same technical quality as the first one. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. John Carradine is is a uh, I don't know how do I want to say this. I like John Carradine. Oh, who does? He's got a great voice, and he has mm-hmm. a, a real uh, gravitas to him when he's in some of his movies. Uh, if you've ever seen uh, Bluebeard from the forties, mm-hmm. that's a good movie, and he's a scary character. Um, but in this, all we get is this these weird. What was uh, that about? What you will have the power, the twelve re- What? Okay, the that's the only part I didn't understand. Thread. That's the only part I didn't understand. The rest of it actually we kind of made sense. But it. no, I, but what was he? I thought he's that the was ghost of dead for Doctor Frankenstein. Yeah. But it. But he's still around because he's got the power. He's great, great oh. granddad Frankenstein. I think that was like. He could get him to do these one takes. This couldn't have taken more than a couple hours. I don't oh, know. absolutely. Maybe even an hour. He reads pretty much the same line, slightly different poses. He He's wore the really same shirt even... he woke up in that day. Uh, yeah. He's not, <laughs> he's not wearing a period shirt. He's, uh, no. You know, from, uh-uh. So he just sits at home. He sends somebody over to shoot these, and he says them in his great voice, and they just splice them in wherever you feel like. <laughs> it almost feels like a Bell Lugosi situation, like Play yeah. Nine, where they film something and it's like, what What does this have to do with anything? It's like, you know, right. I'll, eventually I'm going to make a movie where there's some power. So I, mm-hmm. I felt like that's what the deal was with Andrew Duggan, Duggan but he just kind of, oh, he's available for a day for this much money. Mm-hmm. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds right, well, like fun. Actually, that would I would I would yep. love that that it, you have a filmmaker who just gets together with his drinking buddies and shoots some stuff and then puts it together over time and everything. That would be fine. But well, I, um, I don't just think seems this too is, cynical. I don't think this is what happened, but I, I felt like they could have had I mean Cameron Mitchell was actually delivering lines and putting some emotion into it, but at mm-hmm. the same time I was kind of half thinking uh they got him on a binge weekend and laid him up in this thing and <laughs> got him to say a few yeah. lines. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't. Drunk, <sighs> whole, uh, I, I, yeah, and I, yeah. I don't, I don't. That, that's, that's just. I don't know anything about Cameron Mitchell that says that. I, I think, I think you're one hundred percent. They called him up and he's like, "Uh, does this role require me to sit in a cot?" Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. This this these series of pictures is actually was taking place in chronological order. The first picture is him when he first gets on the job to do the voice work, and they just say, <laughs> "We're not no, we're not filming yet. We're just recording your voice." And then, and then two hours into the recording session, that's that's he realizes he's in deep shit right here yeah. in that one that he's in a, <laughs> a bad movie. And then the third uh. one, he and he's going, "Who the hell are you people?" That's the third one down there. Yeah. So that all took place in a chronological. Well, he's in he's in uh, one of my all time favorite Twilight Zones. Which one? How I'm going to forget the title. The um, Howling Man. Oh, the Howling. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah, he was great um, in that. That's a great one too. I so, uh, and by the way, if you're wondering where did Bill find these these fairly sharp pictures from this movie that looks like it was shot through shot through gauze and then stored in a shed thank goodness for uh topaz ai sharp uh, using computer artificial intelligence that will one day rule us all it is able to make absolute garbage uh stills into slightly less garbage 
Well, I need to talk to you about that because I, I was trying that too and I wasn't getting anything, mm -hmm. but I I don't mess with it other than just let it do its automatic stuff. Yeah. And it's wasn't, wasn't coming up. It can only, it can't perform miracles, but. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, that's John Carradine and he's, you know, it's a bit part. Yeah. Um, Catherine. Catherine Victor. I got to admit, I kind of like Catherine Victor because she's in one of my favorite trash movies from the 50s or 60s, the Cape Canaveral Monsters. <laughs> Is that the and, bottom picture? <laughs> uh, no, that's that's Batwoman. Oh. She was also Batwoman. Oh, that's Batwoman. Okay, wow. And, um, that doesn't look like the poster at all. <laughs> well, no. What do you know about that? Look at that mask. Wow. She was the closest thing to a, to a sexy bombshell that Jerry Warren had. And, uh, you know, she's still rocking a pretty good rack at whatever that the hair piece. Age of, that hair horrible. piece is horrible. What? Okay, it doesn't even one. match her hair. No. What, what would you describe the hair piece? It's kind of like a kind of a mullet. It's got curls like that don't tooth. match the. All it is is the... it's it's just one of those clip on. So this might actually be her hair or this Maybe. could be a wig, too, because the yeah. cut is so wild. Like, look at that cut. Like, but. But then she just literally put this clip on, and it's just got this piece. It doesn't even match. It's not the same texture, not the same consistency as the rest of her hair. I'm just in awe. Every time I saw it, I was like, why why wear it? Why have it on? Just, just Maybe she just she just thought it made her look. Well, I, I think I, I saw she had a fair amount of credits as uh, Dad, it's script hot. continuity. <laughs> not, not for this movie, but she for didn't, other movies. She didn't make enough money then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, what I'm saying is this <sighs> this wasn't her uh, livelihood. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is like extra is what you're saying. She did sure. this for fun. I think she she and Warren must have been buddies because she Clearly, was in yeah. pretty much all the films. That's what I'm saying. He might have been a really nice guy. You know, I'm but, sure. Yeah, maybe. Like yeah. that yeah. third picture right there, and that scene when it happened in the movie, where she just sort of stepped away from the rest of the crowd and went yeah. in and started turning dials and got these white eyes, yeah. and then walks <laughs> back out like nothing happened. That that's one of the things that made me angry in the movie. Is that was that scene? She's got. Chet, uh, Chet, would you say that is the worst choreographed fight sequence? ever because oh. i'm trying to think of anything that would even come close i can't even call that a fight scene it looked like people were tumbling around in the dark uh looking for a football and <laughs> would just happen to trip over each other and fall over yeah. each other because nobody was fighting oh. especially hmm. mr wide lapel from the 70s i can't even remember his name but the one red-haired hmm. guy i think he had red yeah. hair he was supposed to be the athlete of the guy. Some of those karate chops he was throwing to the <laughs> neck, you All know, that wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't hurt a Curtis. baby, you know? Yeah, Curtis. it was like, uh, yeah! And then, <laughs> then was, just a minute, uh, before we mm. go on, the uh, Catherine Victor has like over 30 credits as continuity checker for mostly animated series. Oh, that's mm. fun. Well, I will tell you, she was very articulate. She over enunciated every word, and it yeah. was nice. Like I, I her, yeah, she did a good yeah. job with that. She wasn't a great actress, but she did. She was very deliberate with every word, and you understood exactly what she was saying at every moment. Like that was nice. Yeah, I, so. I love this shot, the the third one down, where she's. It's typical. She's got this maniacal look on her face, and her eyes are glowing, and and of course, Jerry Warren holds it far too long. Oh, way too long. <laughs> she, she's trying to keep her <laughs> mouth like that for too long. Oh, the fight, the fight scene reminded me of an episode yeah. of Lancelot Link: Secret Champ. Oh, oh wow, mm. it was uh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You know what? I, I have a I have a theory now. I think Jerry Warren was in love with Catherine Victor because you're right. He lit the camera lingers on her way longer. That's like that's that's a lover's gaze right there. I'm not saying they were having an affair. I'm not casting any aspersions on their lives or anything. 
But, uh, you know, but- the fact that he was always working with her. And you're right. He just holds that damn camera on this woman like, you know, I have got a goddess here in frame and I am not cutting until I run out of film. Maybe he just thought she was the best performer, though. No, that's faint yeah, praise, but it's been. possible. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, that is a good also, look. Look at her. Look at her. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Crystal, awesome. he wrote the script. So the fact that there was someone who was actually pronouncing every word carefully, every every syllable he oh, put down came out of her mouth, him. understandably. Mm-hmm. I could, it didn't make any sense, but you could understand what she was saying. I picture it was oh, like a, a, yeah. a cliffhanger ending for Dallas, the TV show. <laughs> So, Chad, the, the, and, and Bill both, uh, that fight scene was great because the second time I watched it, I was watching, like, individual people instead of just seeing sort of this nonsensical chaos. It was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. Nobody was doing anything that looked remotely no. like a fight. It, it reminds me of sets I've been on where the director didn't actually direct and just said, okay, everybody yeah. start fighting. And... So you just paired up with someone and you were just doing ignoring what everything else was going on around you. And Jerry, thinking, Jerry, okay, right here where it says fight scene and that's all. Should we fight? Like <laughs> fight, fight? Or it only says fight scene. So and the that, guy and was, you're, mm, you're waiting yeah. for him to cut and go to a different angle or something, and that never they, comes. They don't. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah. No, Jerry Chandler's sitting in the home right now going, you assholes. Yeah, you just don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand the brilliance of Frankenstein Island. Robert Clark. Robert Clark. Is the hideous sun demon. Which, which I'm rather fond of. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember liking it when I was a kid. It's a cool looking I monster. This, I wrote this down somewhere, I thought. Yeah, episode 41 of the classic era. Hmm. Hideous sun demon. I kind of liked it. I thought it was decent. I mean, it was obviously rough around the edges, but uh, um, cool premise. Cool premise was, for a movie, and yeah, yeah. And I he was—I like uh, think he was uh, like co-director, co-writer, and yeah, he had a lot to do with that one. And apparently, he lost his shirt on it, so it's too bad. Yeah, the trick with all these, especially in those days, making a movie was probably not as difficult as distributing it and getting paid right. by the distributors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, so Robert Clark, he was fine. Like, I, this, I, guess. I doubt if I would have recognized him. I don't know if, if I didn't know it was him, Chad. Yeah. I mm-hmm. did. I didn't recognize him. Yeah. It's almost as if they were trying to make a 70s film, an early yeah, 70s film. Weird. Um, that's the tone they were going for. Or, or like like or Bill said, even earlier. Years, but, it's mm-hmm. just crazy. It's like it's like they didn't even try to make him modern at all. Well, that, supposedly Warren said his his thing was that he was talking to Catherine Victor and she said, Hey, monster movies are making money again. And it had been fifteen years since that woman. And that's true. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, Oh, right. great. And then he just went and made a movie just like he did 15 years earlier. He didn't bother to actually go and watch what these modern movies were like. So he's still making. I mean, even look at their wardrobe. It's very yeah. dated. And her, oh. the way she's dressed, oh. her hair is so 60s. Yeah. Like even. It's just very interesting. The wide like, collar. The, the wide mm-hmm. 70s collar. And... What in the hell was Andrew Duggan wearing when they went back to the island? It was the I weirdest don't. looking. Uh, he had on these weird khaki coveralls. It just, they didn't quite fit right. And they didn't. <laughs> Close the, to other, the other guys with him had like a, some kind of semblance of an army jacket on, but he was wearing coveralls. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I looked at them. So it weird. just didn't look right. You get an angle, you get one angle in the collars. It just was very weird. I anyway. noticed that, but there were a lot of other things that bothered me a lot, a lot yeah. more than. <laughs> well, yeah. we also have a couple shots of Cameron Mitchell looking rough. Bring me my tequila, <laughs> my daughter, <laughs> to my daughter. Well, yeah, that was just another one of those things. It, this movie just throws elements at you. They just yeah. oh, and, and well, you think, and, well, that's that's going to be a big deal, but then no, not so much. Uh, and, and in case you're not getting it, he points out that it's from 
you know, like the author Edgar Allan Poe. And yeah. Oh, I know. Jesus. Quoting. Yes. Just in case you're too <laughs> stupid to realize, in case you failed English yeah. lit in high school. Mm-hmm. So he's been, I know you're is... my daughter, but I disowned you after you double dipped your potato chip in the dip at a family function. I had to leave. Don't you understand? <laughs> wow, that's so much better than anything in this movie. <laughs> I am. Actual yeah. motivation. By the way, I was thinking about this. This movie was shot in uh, Arizona, Baja, California, and Mexico. Colossal Cave in uh, Arizona and uh, Escondido in Hollywood. Escondido? That sounds like a <laughs> weird don't know. yeast infection. I thought that, <laughs> I thought those, uh, the huts and the house and stuff just seemed like you know, a place that had two or three outbuildings and then they could just kept coming around from different corners all the time in, yeah. in between the building. I mean, you know, you could see probably. Buildings, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Cameron Mitchell is kind of a world bouncer. This is the fourth film that Decades of Horror has covered that he's in. And yeah. I, I can think of a couple more that I know we'll cover. If we did uh, Screamers on 80s, mm-hmm. And then on uh, classic era, our very our, our second episode was Man Eater of Hydra. Oh wow! From 1967, mm. which is mm. crazy. And then a Baba film, Blood and Black Lace. Yep, uh, was episode 65. I mean, I like Cameron Mitchell, but you know, watching his stuff, especially the later stuff, which is most of the stuff I watch, there is a little bit of sadness because it's it's pretty clear this is a guy who's fallen on hard times. And we'll take anything for a paycheck. That's sad. And you know, what it happened becomes, to him? Does he have a sad life or something? Uh, something? I, I think he was a bit of a drinker. Um, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here. Uh, like like many of them, some of them handle it better than others. And it probably doesn't take too many episodes of you know maybe not showing up on the set on time or something before you get that reputation. And then yeah. the folks who are willing to hire you go further and further down the ladder. And then once you have a reputation of being the guy who's in those garbage movies. That's it. Yep. Then you don't ever get the phone calls. Even people might be willing to give you a chance. You know, it's uh, it's a spiral. And Hollywood's just a cruel place. You reach a certain age also and you don't get phone calls regardless. So. But if he were still alive, he, he see, this is sad thing. These folks died before all this stuff got rediscovered and, and fandom kind of yep. flipped a switch. This guy, if he were still alive, he'd be a hit at every convention. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd never have to buy a drink again. We, we'd all you know, just, we'd just buy him dinner and just pimp him for stories because you know this guy had stories and he was probably oh. not afraid to tell them. Oh, my God. Well, and in wikipedia it says that in 1974 he entered his second bankruptcy with 2.4 million in debts ouch contrasted mm. against 26 dollars in two bank accounts mm. yikes yeah. 26 dollars he told really? associated really? press writer bob thomas the reasons are the same as have happened to other actors over the years stupid bad investments parasites who live off you too much trusted people who handle your money mm. um so you might be right, Bill. I'm I'm just looking to, to see if there's some other hint. Yeah. That's really uh, regrettable. Uh you know, it's a tough business too, because when you're doing well, you know, you, you think, why don't they just save their money and save their money? But when you're doing well, you're expected to live a certain lifestyle. Right. You know, you have to go out to the parties and do all this. And the money's just flowing in there. Sure, it's flowing out almost as fast, but it's coming in. And the problem is there comes and, that point where it doesn't come in, but it's still flowing out. Right. And there's no security. Right. That's yeah. the other thing is it's not like you have a I can I can budget because I I'm getting this paycheck every every week or every month or whatever. That's Yeah, but let's be real. Someone who's smart that has apparently gotten over two million dollars in their lifetime. Debt. Yeah. yeah should have you right. got you can't you can't you can't overspend there's no reason i mean there's just no reason it's just right. really sad it's well, sad. what was he doing, uh chad high chaparral was that the western he yeah was high chaparral. that was one of my favorite western shows growing up but we see this happen all the time with athletes 
and actors. And the one thing they have in common is um, you can be on top of the world, but your shelf life can be very short. And neither of those skills, and they are skills. I don't want to take anything away that, you know, you're less intelligent because you're an actor or an athlete. I mean, there's there's a level of intelligence there I don't have. But neither, but that those skills do not necessarily lend themselves well to things like math. I or, know. You know. So sad. This says uh, he provided the voice of Jesus Christ in the robe. Oh, cool. In 1953, although another actor played the character. I, I hardly remember Jesus having any lines in the robe, but okay. He may not. He may not. But he's he shows up. You're you're watching an old, um, you know, spaghetti western or uh, or just you know films made in Europe. He he must have lived there because he just shows up. He's got such he's got a distinctive face. He's got great delivery. He can act to the rafters. I mean, he's an enjoyable presence, and that's why it's sad that you know the yep. later years were pretty rough. Uh, who would have thought Frankenstein Island would bring us down? I know it's sad. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so Cameron Mitchell, and then we get to some of the strangest stuff. Uh-oh. Uh. Well, <laughs> yeah. Alien oh, my God. Bikini babes that dance. Bikini <sighs> babes. I know. It's so weird. And that leopard skin print there that they must have had on sale because they're all wearing the same thing. But the one, the one woman has a snake, and she's just like, and he's like, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Really, dude? You need to get out more. Like, for real. Yeah. What? Well, what on how about earth? the woman? How about the woman who was like um stretched out like a hammock and and they're like, come, let's leave. Like, what about your friend? And no one says anything and they just walk away. It's like, cool, okay, I guess. I guess that's it was her initiation, does. remember? Oh. They wow. they got her down. They're like, Oh, are you okay? I thought your your punishment. She's like, It wasn't yeah. punishment, it was my initiation. Into what? Yeah. Into whatever. Into the sorority. The, I felt tribe, the fire or whatever. Guess. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. I was like, oh, okay. Great. Fabulous. It's <laughs> so weird. It's, I just saw another. It's very weird. I'm sorry. Another Cameron Mitchell quote. This uh -oh. is from 1961. I have to live too. 40% for her, his ex-wife. 10% to an agent. 5% to a manager. And on and on. It comes to about 128%. Oh, well. yeah, why little, was his little, ex-wife getting 40 so, so why was his ex-wife getting 40 percent? that's what she kind had of a better lawyer in 1960 i yeah that's insane anyway. i mean john that's carradine insane. john carradine was married multiple times too a lot a lot of these actors that you see in these bad movies you know alimony they needed they needed a steady yeah but you usually you can't get alimony until you've been married for at least 10 years and then you i've never seen someone get 40 percent. he got screwed yeah he got screwed and uh, you know he probably he he probably was a pushover and yeah. signed it and gave it to her because i have never seen a court award 40 percent. they usually even only award like i mean i know california has very high ch uh, child support laws but even still yeah it's high the m amount of money is high but the percentage is like 25 percent, which is is very high considering the rest of the country well i still but... think 60 years ago it was it was yeah it, it was 40 percent um i i don't know i don't know that's what he said, right? Like that's but what he that's, said. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Well, I don't I know if that's, that's a, if that's a accurate thing for uh, yeah, like I said, years ago, but that. I guarantee you that you know if if boy, I swear I've heard of fifty percent. I've I've heard of some pretty bad ones. Yeah, maybe it's changed uh, with no fault divorce. But boy, did well, this Frankenstein and, and hate milk boy. jugs or what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His only offensive. Move oh in my the god! Fight okay, was, so wait. Wait, I just had to look this up. Uh -oh. This is insane. Uh -oh. Alimony is usually around 40% of the paying party's income. What? Are you kidding me? Uh-oh, so Crystal's cool. looking at Sean. She's like, hmm. That's, that's insane. That's, Might as well stay that's, married. That's ridiculous. That's, 
no wonder why men kill their wives and stuff when they're <laughs> when when they know that they're gonna leave them you know Been like I mean, years. i've never understood why a man would do that you know it's like what what like why would you do that over money i didn't realize it was basically half wow. of his money that's insane Killing a woman over ten percent is insane. Well, I think it, well, to me, uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, come on, I mean, you, I know, I people know do saying. people do more for way less, but forty oh, yeah. percent, forty percent of your income, that's debilitating. That that could cripple someone completely. Well, and and I'm, I'm not saying what's right or not, but I think the idea what I remember back then was, wow, uh, I had no idea. If the woman's never, not working, right? Mm -hmm. The guy, and she is might not have been back then then the woman should be allowed to live at the level that she's accustomed to kind of thing. And so that's, yeah. uh, you know, I, I have no idea what the rates were. Anyway, Frankenstein, Frankie, what is it? What are those bottles? All those. They're empty milk jugs from the looks of it. They fall. I could have knocked them over and I'm not even a, you know, a superhuman creature built from the parts. Milk the jugs, people. bad, bad. He's, he plays it like, uh, like Bell Lugosi and, if Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, where he's blind. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'd punch these people out if I could find them. But the, my oh. headpiece is slipping over my mm -hmm. head. Okay. So this this is another one of those things. We hear that the only way to kill these goons, is all I can think of them as, is to cut them in half with a machine gun. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Oh, and find... but the logic, too. There must be one around here, because she mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's check out the machine gun, right? That is funny. We brought it up. It's got to be here. But then when he finds it, he goes, wow, this is like something from the Civil War. I'm like, look yeah. like World War II. Yeah, those II, Civil maybe. War machine yeah. guns. It's, <laughs> it's why it Shiloh was such a bloody battle. Because yeah. I remember thinking, oh, cool, this might be like a Gatling gun. No. 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 Anyway, and then it jammed. So, because they, didn't, they didn't, have it, the, they didn't have the budget to actually show, you know, Stuff he had all the uh, all the alien bikini babes standing there feeding the like they knew what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Now we got to get to the uh, what what Bill calls what the, the hell. WTF. Okay, yeah, okay. This. Oh this my god, yes. The first time I watched this movie, <sighs> I'm like, it's late at the night. The pitchfork. Oh god. Maybe I was drinking. It's I'm not a what drinker. Did they do but this with movie all the Reese's pieces that were in. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank what, you. What, what do you mean? What Reese's pieces? The, that's those things came. Packed full of candy. Filled with candy. Filled with candy. Wait, that's what that. The no, that's Halloween. just a pitchfork. You seen those for, pitchforks? That's a toy for, pitchfork. for a for a devil's costume. Yeah, but what are you talking about Reese's Pieces? Oh yeah, they're usually come Halloween full of candy. Filled with M and M's or Reese's oh, Pieces. No. Or... But pitchfork? even if it mm -mm. even but if I've it seen didn't those, have candy, like for, yeah. as soon as you see that, you don't think, oh, I these know. zombies have some kind of weird device. You think this is a toy for children. This is the mm. cheapest prop you could have got. They, like Jerry Warren yeah. sent his prop master out there. Go find something that we can use. Yeah. And, and he came back with these. But, and like, but it has the power to do this. To turn you into a vampire? Yes. Well. Wow. <laughs> 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 you uh, how do y'all not think that's excellent Sorry. freaking entertainment? Sorry to our is. audio listeners. I just yeah. Gif of uh, the, the bikini girl who automatically no, but, who suddenly gets the vampire teeth. Uh, now, admittedly, also, does that also look turns red and disappears? Yeah, disappears. Does that look any worse than your typical Star Trek, the original series um, special effect? And no, it doesn't. But then that was from well, the well, yeah, it does. It does look worse. Yeah, it's than, bad. Than, it's than, yeah, <laughs> it does still look worse, actually. Even third <laughs> season Star Trek so, is pretty bad. Yeah. And here's, that is here's the uh, worst. and it turns it turns them into vampires. Why? Um, Why? Mm -hmm. Why? And here's his WTF part two. God, it's dumb. With the circle of cosmic fire. Cosmic yeah. fire. The the guy wow. wearing the comical hamburglar. I escape from prison in a yes. striped suit. Rubble, rubble. Who is rubble. never explained? No. But they just like. I, I feel like it, it was never in a shot with anything else, was it? I Not never saw that thing like sitting in the corner of the room. They just cut yep. to it every now they and just, then. I'm still here. Yes. <laughs> they show Cameron Mitchell then, ooh, you know. I have seen many things. 
Yeah, it's it's you know. So this is one of those things. If you're making a movie, it's always good advice to shoot something that you can cut to, so you don't have a jump cut. Which I think in a Jerry Warren movie is a constant threat. Yeah. Like usually the old clock on the wall. You, you and then you know someone says something, you cut to the clock on the wall, and then you cut to you know the other person framed exactly the same way because you're incompetent and you don't understand the 180 rule. Um, that was basically what that skeleton was. We're just going to cut to it for for continuity's sake. Which, as I'm saying that, it amazes me. It amazes me that Jerry Warren never once thought, "Boy, we got to fix continuity in this scene." I don't think. I, I, <sighs> I think he, he thought he had this thing, and he thought it was cool. <laughs> so he took it. He took a, a shot of it, yeah. and yeah. then just cut it in a couple places. I can stick it in when he's in the jail cell. You know, it's, I don't know. And I forget what that on the bottom was. The hands. It's it's like the one decent special effect I well think. over you know that top picture too there they have these uh yeah. eight by tens of uh john carradine all over the place you know <laughs> just whatever <laughs> yeah. whatever they're working there's a eight by ten of john carradine looking over him. <laughs> like l ron hubbard or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right one more wtf and this i i have no idea what this was I, I couldn't figure it out, but they kept showing it over and over and over. Oh, yeah. yeah. What it's, is it's that? Lunchbox. It's, it's a lunchbox. A right? haunted lunchbox, yeah. Or a makeup case, and it's spinning on an obviously, you know, they got a drill underneath there. Right? And, it's, and there's a, <laughs> what, like a Geiger counter. I just, they just kept, that's another one. They just kept cutting to it to show electromagic, I think, you know. Yeah. Like, it's just weird, though. Why? Was like the old man in the bed trying to test his brain power. Uh, Van Helsing. Yeah, Van yeah Helsing. maybe that was it. That was <laughs> yeah, the other that's one. That's so dumb. That's so nice funny. Nice little twist. Van Helsing is Doctor Frankenstein's assistant. Wait a minute. Yeah. Or yeah. It doesn't, matter. Oh, okay. doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Then there's a the big revelation. Vampires. He's uh, almost 200 years old. That should come into play. Nah, not so much. Lots of yeah. things are said that you think, okay. Something's going to tie all this together. No. And that never happens. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That makes me angry. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. You know, when I said, I, I swear, they alternated scenes one day and night. Yeah. And those three guys, they'd be walking someplace and something would happen. And then it would cut to another scene and it'd be those same three guys in another place. And it's dark now. And they're walking yeah. someplace. Or this time they're with the women. Last time they were with Steve Brody going. Ah! <laughs> oh, the laughing. Yeah, because yeah. they like went crazier. It's so. He laughed at the oh, beginning of every so line cringy. and at the end of every line. That's, was, if I saw yeah. one more, one more scene of those guys walking through a field somewhere or across some rocks, uh, I was going to flush my phone down the toilet. I was thinking it, may, it reminded me of Planet of Dinosaurs in terms of the walking. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of that. Uh, it's it's so hard to pick your favorite part of this movie, but I think mine came at, almost at the very beginning when they're like they're stranded on this island. They're like, maybe we can build a raft. And as God is my witness, the oh, guy yeah. who delivers that line is holding a yes. perfectly good inflated raft. Yes, yes. You're like, really? Huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> sure. Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. And, and he just. He just drops it over and they walk away. <laughs> and they walk uh, away from it. Maybe we can build a raft because I don't know what happened to the one I was holding. Did that on purpose to be funny? Do you think I that really any Absolutely of that? Surely. No. Really? No one is that stupid, though. I oh, mean. Yeah. Well. <laughs> there might have been a line in there about the, the, the raft having a puncture that uh, they cut or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Had a there was so they much a long stuff. Time to deflate. Nobody could have thought yeah. this script was a coherent story, so there had to have been lots of weird. It feels like it was filmed over a few years, but I don't think it was. It just that's that's the Jerry Warren touch. Well, choppy and it doesn't hold together. So I did want to mention uh, Steve Brody because I I like Steve Brody, and that this is a guy that had uh, some trouble with alcohol, but. Um, this is the fourth movie we've done on Decades of Horror with Steve Brody. So on 70s, we did The Giant Spider Invasion in episode 44. 
Uh, also on Classic Era, he was in The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, episode 69, and he's in Donovan's Brain, episode uh-huh. 110. Donovan's, Donovan's Brain, Brain, he's the crooked reporter, investigator that's trying to blackmail him for money. He meets him in the mm-hmm. hotel room off. Anyway, but this guy, uh, in terms of film noir, he was at, at these are just things where these these are directors that I really like too. So in 1947, he was in Desperate, that was directed by Anthony Mann, written by Harry Essex, who we know, right? Uh, he wrote some 50 sci-fi, but he also directed Octo Octoman. Oh God! <laughs> uh, and that also had Raymond Burr in it. Crossfire, which is a really, it's one of the top two rated maybe top three rated film noirs uh, directed by Edward Dimitrik starring the three Roberts, Robert Young, Robert Mitchum, and Robert Ryan. And he was also in out of the past, which is another one of the top three or four noirs that starred, uh, uh, directed by Jacques Tonier and starring Robert Mitchum, Kirk Douglas and Jane Greer. And then I didn't remember this, but he was in a movie called Bodyguard, directed by Richard Fleischer. Oh, wow. Who did Fantastic Voyage and uh, what was the other one? Soylent Green, I believe. Uh Um, Also written by Harry Essex with Lawrence Tierney. The Great Plane Robbery, directed by Edward Kahn. We've done movies directed by Edward Kahn, Invasion of the Saucer Men, It the Terror from Beyond Space, and Invisible Invaders. Oh, well, I like all three of those. Armored Car Robbery, another one directed by Richard Fleischer that starred Charles McGraw and William Tallman, later later to be uh, Perry Perry, Naaman's, Perry Mason's foil uh, in, the, in the old movie. Um, M, which is a remake of the original M. Yeah. Uh, directed by Joseph Losey, who was originally supposed to direct X the Unknown but got booted. Uh, and that, that version of M stars David Wayne. And then he was also in the Kane mutiny, you know, with Humphrey Bogart, wow. those guys, which was directed by Edward Dimitri, the far country, a really good Western directed by Anthony Mann with James Stewart, and Walter Brennan, Brennan, three came to kill another one directed by Edward Kahn with Cameron Mitchell. He played Sheriff Johnny Behan in nine episodes of The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, a TV show in the late 50s, which I really like. Hugh O'Brien was Wyatt Earp. Uh, He was in two Elvis Presley movies, Blue Hawaii and Roustabout. So anyway, I I like Steve Brody. Hmm. And he, he, he played a lot of bad guys. Because he had a way he could he could look swarmy and smarmy and and, mm-hmm. and pissed off and stuff. But he also played some some good guys in some of these uh, other ones. Armored Car Robbery is a really really good one too. So anyway, that's my spiel on Steve Brody. And he took his name from the daredevil that supposedly jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge and lived. Oh, hmm. uh, he just decided. That's more interesting than my real name, so I'm going to take that. Hmm. Uh, he went to an audition. The guy asked him if he was any relation. He said, yeah, that's my uncle. And they called him up later, and he got the job. He doesn't know if that's why he got the job, but that was the first time he auditioned with that name. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I bored the hell out of everybody. Uh, but, uh, no, he had an interesting life. But you know he, what? He probably, he probably said... But, Frankenstein Island, this is the one they're going to remember me for. That was close to the end, wasn't it? Yeah. So, uh, any final comments, guys? Still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey Z. Uh, I liked it. So. I believe, it seems, like I, it seems like I saw a quote from Robert Clark where he said uh, that he was he was really excited about it. He seemed to be really excited about it. And it sounded, sounded like it might be good. And, and then he saw, it. yeah. How long hey, Mikey, I got I, through I, this field. I made a special poster of this movie for Mikey. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to him on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 
so this is this is the line I like. They're they're in Andrew Duggan's office, and they're trying to convince him that to to go check out what's at this island that they escaped from. And his line is, I cannot brush off the reality of that raft that you were on. Oh, God. Those yeah. logs are tangible, obviously <laughs> rooted to the ground. I'm like, what, what the does that even hell mean? Does that no. mean? I know. And then there's another time where they're, where the, the, the Dr. Frankenstein that's in bed, <clears throat> uh, the old guy says, You'll have to start the transfusion slowly. Don't rush it, but gradually pick up time as you progress. It just what does what? pick up time? It sounds, it sounds scientific. It's, it's, yeah, but yeah. You pick up, you it know. sounds like someone who's being paid by the word. So they just keep saying up, the same thing over and pick over up the again. Rate, pick up the speed, pick up the, you know. But Joseph Perry science talk. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. All right. I, I'm, I'm boring everybody and we got a ton of feedback. So uh, <laughs> any final comments? Any more? I thought it was fun and... <laughs> Sure. It's, it's kind of it interesting once. to see. I I really got a kick out of Steve Brody because I've always liked him. But then when I found out after a couple scenes with him, I go, well, this is all he's going to do the whole movie. And that's what he did. Have that insane laugh. So anyway. Okay. Okay. Feedback. Oh, I well, think oops. Chad was, uh, you picked <laughs> Cannibal Apocalypse, right? I think so. Oh, no. All right. Can you take that one? Let me get down to where my feedback is. All right. Uh, Prong1975 says about Cannibal Apocalypse, Alessandro Blanksteiner, who did the music for this film, also did the music for House by the Cemetery alongside Romano Rizzotti. Blocksteiner wasn't credited, obviously, for House by the Cemetery. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Appreciate, always appreciate information. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Prong 1975. I, Prong 1975. And in uh, for Company of Wolves, episode 226, Andy L. Now, I don't know if you remember, but Andy L. wrote in about he thought he had seen uh, some talk show episode with certain horror directors in it. Yes. And then Wes Diorio came back and replied and provided him information. Mm -hmm. And so he says, uh, I'm a bit behind in podcasts, but just listen to 80s Company of Wolves. I remember watching it on cable TV a few months after it came out. I think I nodded off while watching it and never bothered to go back to it. It was kind of dull, as I remember. Although I do like other things by Neil Jordan. As to the tomorrow show, considering that it was over 40 years ago at one in the morning and I'm around your age, it's impressive that I remember anything about it at all. <laughs> I, I can contest to that. <laughs> I do remember that it had Coscarelli defending the blood and phantasm and they aired a truncated version of the spear in the hallway of the mausoleum, stopping before the drill went into the head. I would have sworn that they also talked about scanners exploding head scene as well but perhaps it was brought up without Cronenberg in attendance West Diorio is likely correct about Romero being the other director and I do appreciate the time he took to check on this the main gist of the show was the defense of the level of gore in modern 1970s horror movies I don't remember Tom Snyder being too supportive of the need for the explicit nature of the movies I have seen the other interview mentioned of Mick Garris with Carpenter, Landis, and Cronenberg, which is on YouTube. But this one I saw uh, a couple of years ago. So, yeah. Wes DiOrio, the guy who finds stuff for us old farts who misremember mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> He's my hero. All right. And Crystal. So, wait, who picked uh, Company of the Wolves? That was Crystal, right? That was No, that was Bill. Was oh, that Bill? Mm -hmm. Well, good because here's one from Jerry Chandler. Okay. Oh, by the way, by the way, guys, you can tell Jerry is back to a normal schedule. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting long misses. Uh, I'll see Jerry tomorrow, actually. Oh, okay. oh yay! Yeah. Tell him I said yeah. hi, and I will. I will. We've got a, we've got a, online Dragon Con panel we're doing in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's oh yeah, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry Chandler says. I love this movie. I even recommended it back when you were all talking about films to possibly cover for the anniversary show. Granted, 
it was about one of about 12 I mentioned, but I still mentioned it. I loved it when it first came out and I saw it during its movie channel run, but I'll admit to not understanding it. I think it's very much like Quidon for me. I saw both when I was much younger, fell in love with the fairy tale nature of the stories and the beautiful style they were filmed in, and only started piecing together some of the meaning of the stories as I grew older and started experiencing life a little more. It's sadly a movie that still holds up in the worst way. The same attitudes and dangers toward women still exist today, whether to a lesser extent or just better hidden, is up to you to decide. As such, some things in it still ring too true. But even if you take out that aspect of it, it really is a beautifully shot fairy tale that makes for an enjoyable yeah. viewing experience when you're in the mood for horror that's more of that style. I'd call this one sadly overlooked and underviewed, but unfortunately, I think that's what it was meant to be. It's not a film made for the masses. It's absolutely more made for a niche audience, and at least in that audience, it's still getting its just due. I totally agree. I love it. It's such a great yeah. flick. Like, Good such job, a nice Jerry. movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then... Jerry Chandler, oh, God. 227, Vampire's Kiss. <laughs> so this is... Uh, this was my pick. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh God, I'm afraid. Okay, <clears throat> Jerry Chandler. To steal from Johnny Dangerously. <laughs> I've watched this movie once. Once. <laughs> Don't know why, it just doesn't click with me. And God knows, I like far worse vampire spoofs and comedies than this. Yes, Jerry, we know. Thank Beating Bill to the response, Jerry owns and repeatedly watches worse movies than this and won't shut up about <laughs> them. <laughs> But it was way back in the days, so maybe it'll play differently for me now. Wouldn't be the first time I didn't like or hated a movie on first view and ended up liking it after years of time and life made me see it differently. As for the decade of horror, the 90s. Look, I love decade of horror, the 80s, and I don't want to get less of it, but that might be the prize. When you guys have batted 90s, is it 2000s? I have to say 2000s or even 2000 teens. Yeah, I'm like, what is that? I'm like, how do you actually say that? Um, around, you bat around films. I'd love to hear you talk about. I know, me too. It'd be so much fun. Why not extend the non-repeat lifespan of Decade of Horror 1980s by making every fourth recording day a Decade of Horror 1990s and beyond? There's certainly nostalgia value in some of the films you cover for 80s but i would love to hear you hit some of those later films that have come up in discussions that's and, an intriguing possibility yeah and split second and savage land and exists and yep. hell you're never going to get around to the glorious wonder that is oh god here we go again that is the night that is the 1981's The Loch Ness Horror, of course. So it ain't like you're going to delay getting to that one by much if you add in the 90s and beyond recordings. True. <laughs> Maybe. So actually, okay. here we go again. I, I was going to pick The Loch Ness Horror next. Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, but yeah. I think I'm, but... I'm going to wait until I see uh, the director and I... I I can't remember his name, but it's Tabuada that did when uh, even the Winds Afraid and the Book of Stone that we did in classic era has a 70s movie and an 80s movie that's going to premiere huh. on Shudder on May 8th. So I want to check that out first because sometimes stuff flies through Shudder pretty fast. Uh, and Lack Ness yeah. Horror on YouTube Everything. don't seem to be going anywhere. So I'm promising you, Jerry. We'll get to it. Your day will come. I'd like to go ahead and get it done just to get it out of the damn way so we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that was yeah. the theory behind Frankenstein Island. How'd that work out? Yeah. Well, well, now well, we'll there's... See. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Not much. Uh, appreciate yeah. the ideas, uh, Jerry. These are all things we talk about. The problem is we hate to give up what we're already doing to do other things even though we would like oh. to do the other things too i guess uh, well that's anyway. what i think that's yeah that was part of it mm -hmm. episode 228 zombie nightmare also from jerry chandler chad jerry wrote into us wow 
Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Jerry Chandler says, I cannot believe you would watch this before either Loch Ness Horror or Frankenstein Island. I feel so personally attacked. You see? (laughs) You see? (laughs) If we just go ahead and do it, tear the band-aid off. So Jerry does like Frankenstein Island, doesn't he? He does like he likes He likes seeing me suffer. That's what he likes. No, it's good, Bill. It's it's actually good. Speaking of which, before I forget, I looked up while we were talking, and you were right, Crystal. Tyler Moore was the other one that mentioned it in the okay, feedback good. last episode. Yeah. So, hey, seriously, Frankie, how did you get all the way through it? This is a film that even I have to have reacted to by seeing one or two times, only because other people were watching the second time, and have ever since then to follow Nancy's advice, just said no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Wow, he's quoting funny. Nancy Reagan. Okay. I think I last saw oh. it when I was in Florida. So that. last half of the eight of the nineties. From your discussion, it sounds like it's worse than I remember. Yeah. I'll accept that as fact <laughs> and pass up on rewatching it to make sure. That's what we're here for. You're banned, Jerry. Yeah. <gasps> oh, there we go. Yeah, banned. 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 For life. All right then. Uh, episode 229 on Chud. We have one from Dallas Nostromo. Chud was mine, so he says, uh, Dallas says, Chud is one of those films I like to revisit every few years as it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the look of the creatures with their glowing eyes. However, there are two aspects to the film I've never understood. First was the shower scene when the woman tries to unclog the shower drain using a coat hanger and blood splatters all over her. I've never under, I've never understood what the source of the blood was. She doesn't push the coat hanger in very far, and her apartment is located on the third floor. Do any of you know? No. 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 That that's what's that's actually one of the worst stuff edited stuff. scenes because it's not what? most of it isn't quite that bad, but that was very confusing. I well, agree it's horror. totally. It's horror. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, secondly, when the truck tire falls into the sewer manhole and explodes, did that cause all the gas in the sewers to also explode, thus kill all the remaining chuds? Well, sure. there's more than one chud movie, so no. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> Didn't get Killed everybody except Bud. Bud the truck. I've also oh, found if you consider this film a prequel to Home Alone, it makes a lot more sense <laughs> in a nonsensical sort of way. <laughs> sort of. Okay, not really, but maybe. Maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. I also consider Chud 2 to be one of the worst sequels ever made. Oh, yeah. One last thing, if the creators really wanted to make the film scary, they should have renamed the creatures Chads. Because frankly, <laughs> a group of Chads coming out of the sewer and eating people is a hell of a lot scarier. Love Dallas. No, he's not we'll referring. I don't think he's referring to you, Chad. I think he's referring oh, to he is. Chad. Oh, I think he's referring to uh, Chad. He's, he's, referring, he's to referring to Chad. And we do that on the weekends. So yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I was like, wait, he's Chad not talking Dallas about have a, uh, Chad. Have a relationship. Yeah. Oh well. Oh. Wow. All right. We're we're almost all <laughs> in. So <laughs> yes, Chad. I think we should go. Uh, let's see, Wicked City, number two thirty. Bill? That was mine. Well, we have two here. Chris Spasso says, surprise, they made a live action version. And then he says, I should have listened to the whole show first. So I guess because <laughs> you brought it up. You up. brought it yeah. up. Yeah, you said um, it. You mentioned and it. And then. You do that sometimes, but we appreciate it anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then a stranger named Jerry Chandler says, hitting a few points in reverse <laughs> order. A few comments at the end of the show. I thought Bill had seen one of the rape zombie films, also called Lust of the Dead on American releases and could warn people off. Don't go looking for this thing. I saw about 15 minutes of the first one at a tiny local convention that had a room where they were playing Japanese horror. I walked out on it after walking in on it. It's literally what the name implies. The zombies get rapey around living women and being live action Japanese bat guano crazy horror. It's not subtle. I use it as a scale for comparing things. Rape zombie being rock bottom when the other people know about it, because most people I know, even the crazy horror people, do not understand how this thing ever became popular, let alone popular enough to become four or five films. Oh, Japan. (laughs) Well, just to to throw this out to the, uh, I don't know about the Blu-ray, but the DVD of God Monster of Indian Flats 
yeah has a film that includes uh sasquatch rape oh uh, yes, yes. Oh. yeah okay um two chad is partially right about ova he probably remembering how it was used as a label by people stateside back in the 80s and 90s because it was used wrong by a lot of people even reputable genre max hey we were all learning the new lingo an ova is an original animation video made for the home video market and bypasses tv or theaters i think there was some confusion back in the day in part because of how prolific the ova output was and how much of it was connected to things that weren't ova disney might do a single direct-to-video sequel from time to time but some Japanese properties have tons of OVA sequels and continuations. One example, my favorite anime from back in the 80s and 90s was a TV series based on Ranma One Half. By the time it was getting wide release on home video here in the States, this TV series was done and the US releases were all the seasons, three movies, and at that time, 10 or 11 OVA movies. People would say OVA on the package and think it was a broader term rather than meaning direct to video. Yeah, I Akira, that. even though some people back then mislabeled it and some still do online, was a theatrical release. It wasn't an OVA, but it's not remotely close to being the only one mislabeled by much of North American fandom back in the day. Now, as to the movie itself, well, shucks, you didn't recoil in horror from Bill Mulligan after seeing this movie. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I was expecting 40 minutes of pointing at him while chanting, shame, 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 shame. 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 We can do it now. Shame. Shame. shame, Only, you know, keeping his clothes on for the sake of our sanity. Yes. <laughs> of course, then you'd have to do the same to me. Ooh. Why are you I guys trying it? to get naked? Because <laughs> Game of Thrones, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah. Shame, okay. shame. Yeah. I need a body oh, double like she did. I love this film. First encountered it down in Florida in the late 90s. Love the concepts and the visuals. Well, most of the visuals. Fantastic world building. To this day, anytime I see it, I end up wanting to know more about and see more of that world because they managed to make it seemingly rich and wider than what we saw. Totally agree. You guys basically covered almost everything else I would have said up to and including the issues it has that you have to warn people about before they see it. But wow, I don't think I'd ever heard an episode where it sounded so much like so many of you were actually thinking as you were talking, how do I phrase this properly so not to have it come out sounding horribly wrong? <laughs> good read, good read, read Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. might have been... Right here look like a vagina. Yeah. 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 We, were pro- <laughs> we were probably walking on eggshells a little bit just because... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it. all those years of law enforcement has trained him to see when people are trying to think very carefully, not to incriminate themselves as they say. Yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> actually, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I guess we had talked uh, on another episode, in case people hadn't heard that. Uh, our uh, faithful listener Jerry Chandler had been extremely busy in his job yes. and other things for a while, and he suddenly broke loose and was catching up and. I, love I still feel that. like everyone is still, we're all still playing catch up from COVID and closures oh. and stuff. I still feel like I'm yeah. still trying to get into daily norm. I don't know why. Just I still don't feel completely back to normal. It's no. very odd. And certainly if you work at schools like I do, you're seeing it still. Oh, wow. It, it's going to be a long time before we're, we're ever free of it. Oh, so. wow. All well, right. Well, we'll appreciate it, Jerry. And yes, Jerry. Uh, everybody else in Dallas, uh, Chris. And yes. uh, you guys are all Andy. right, man. Yeah. And prong. Andy, yep. Andy, good to Kids hear from you. Kids are all right. Man. Prong 1975. Well, that's it for this episode, Group Believers. But oh, is it really? We, you sure. It's really. Do this again in <laughs> two weeks. Uh oh. Next up is one chosen by Chad. Oh, Chad. Yeah. Are we watching Chad? Do you remember? What could it be? Now? We're going to watch Zombie 3 from 1988. Ooh. God. And it has interesting, it says it's Lucio Fulci, but it lists two yeah, other directors as uncredited. So. It's also Bruno Mattai. Yeah, it's 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 a troubled have, production. Yeah. One I've Uh-oh. never seen. So. I, see, I have, but I don't, I mean, it's been so long. I don't, I think I liked it. I mean, it's I know Italian like zombie, cannibal zombies. I mean, come but on. yeah, and but it doesn't actually follow a storyline for Zombie Three, right? Isn't it still no. different from? It's not yeah, technically yeah. like a third, isn't it? There's, there's no kind. Well, I'm they're all weird. I mean, yeah, Zombie Two was also zombie. It's 
their sequel to Night of the Living Dead. It was their yeah. sort of sequel to Night of the Living Dead or, or, or Dawn of the Dead. I don't know. Yeah, God, it gets confusing. These then, these the, movies get confusing for me. Have you ever heard Joe why, Bob? That... Have you ever Joe Bob Briggs talking about the Demons franchise? It's the oh yes, thing ever. yes, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, plenty of ways to stay in touch. Please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine dot com or just leave comments here on the YouTube channel. Um, or you can go to a Gruesome Magazine's uh, HNR and DOH podcast Facebook group or to the website at gruesomemagazine.com or even yes. leave reviews on iTunes. Please, even if you're listening on audio, if you could just do us a favor and go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. It doesn't hurt. Nothing bad will happen to you. But, you know, yeah, we would appreciate it. And we would owe you one. Not yeah. me. <laughs> not me but them yeah, yeah. yeah. these, <laughs> yeah. these yeah. people as it, yeah talking about jeff yeah, yeah, chad and out. i are a team you guys yeah. are out <laughs> i don't know no one maybe i'm Nothing. the only one i don't know i don't know well next thing hey. you know i'll be getting phone calls going oh, what are you wearing chad it'll be <laughs> chad oh Chandler. Oh, it's either Jerry Chandler or Doc. Or Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> or Dallas. Yeah. Or Dallas, yeah. Wanna... I would die. All That'd right, be funny. Right. Well, I tell I you what. just a wondering. Um, <laughs> catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie. The 1980s is only decades of horror oh, can God. do it. And wow, did this go way long because yeah. Yeah, I like talking about Steve Brody, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you did. Yeah, you did. Sure. Hell, dude. Oh. That's true. Uh, anyway, it's okay. We still I feel like I'm an expert on Steve Brody now. Yes, now. Yeah. Uh, say good Don't forget everybody. to order Bill's book, Round. Uh, oh, absolutely. Oh, oh yes, I just happen to have yes, one yes, right yes. here. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's got demons and stuff. Lawyers and demons. Oh my. Oh. Oh my. Lawyers, yeah. guns, and money. Say good night, mm -hmm. everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Some magazine.